I could have killed you, but I chose to let you live. I chose to let her live. As in, I had a choice. All women should have a choice. Hello everyone and welcome to This Week in Woke, where we discuss the sillier side of a new cycle full of death, despair and decay over tea in these troubled times. This week we have Democratic Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez running her mouth on the Texas tragedy, why the San Francisco Unified School District has announced it's removing the word chief from job titles, and finally this week's very best of libs of TikTok. So. Here we go. Also, for anyone wondering, this week's blend of tea is a beautiful herbal concoction that is in fact designed to help one sleep. So let's hope that I don't fall asleep in the making of this video. In news that will surprise no one, democratic politicians and public figures have been out in force exploiting the terrible recent tragedy in Texas for political ends. However, this time, in addition to the usual opportunistic calls for greater gun control, certain political figures are using the tragedy to piggyback their pet woke causes. Hmm. For example, for some reason, former President Barack Obama decided to use the deaths of 19 children to memorialize George Floyd. As we grieve the children of Uvalde today, we should take time to recognize that two years have passed since the murder of George Floyd under the knee of a police officer. His killing stays with us all to this day, especially those who loved him. Now, how the death of George Floyd and the ensuing racial politics relates to the Texas tragedy, Obama didn't even try to explain, which is probably because neither one relates to the other, so he knows that if he attempted to form a direct link, he'd look even more like a vulture. Nevertheless, not only did he try to clout chase for race politics by using the deaths of 19 children, he also tried to fundraise for it. In the aftermath of his murder, a new generation of activists rose up to channel their anguish into organized action, launching a movement to raise awareness of systemic racism and the need for criminal justice and police reform. Inspired by these young leaders, at MBK Alliance launched a reimagining policing pledge for mayors and cities ready to take action. If you're wondering how you can help make things a little better today, here are some ways to get involved. And yes, there is in fact a link to donate on that website. Honestly, people always say Barack Obama is just so classy and compassionate, but honestly, I... I don't see it. However, Obama's tasteless woke contribution kind of paled in comparison to that of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, or Red Cortez as I like to call her. As is her style, she jumped onto an Instagram live stream to give her opinion to her 8.5 million followers, and within that 53 minute stream was this ream of what I can only describe as a sequence of social justice word vomit. Check on the men in your life. Seriously. There are a lot of crises, um, and especially as we try to evolve out of a world that is predatory on women, gay, non-binary, and trans people because traditional regressive, you know, patriarchal values really create men's identity in relation, uh, create like men's identity and uplift men's identity in relation to other things, in relation to like how women treat them, how much stuff they have, etc. And when for a very long period of time, we have been taught that trans and non-binary and, and women are less than, as they say, in oppressive societies, equality feels like oppression. And so I think there, you know, there are a lot of structures that are having identity crises right now because there are there there is progress towards equality but there is such a thing as healthy masculinity that is not rooted in the subjugation of other people
exactly is she trying to get across with all of that? There are a whole lot of wokey concepts mashed in there, you know, something about patriarchy shaping the identities of men to think that they're apparently above everyone else, which really makes no sense in relation to what happened in Texas given the perpetrator's age and circumstances. There's a bit of LGBT victimhood activism in there. I don't know even how that's in there. The, then there's also a few extra lefty buzzwords thrown in for good measure. Mm. I think what she's trying to do though in a roundabout way is vaguely excuse the perpetrator since he was in fact Hispanic. If he had been white, AOC would have been able to scream about Trump and systemic racism and you know all of her usual shtick. But since she doesn't have that narrative to back her up and in fact the identity politics of this is really, really inconvenient for her, she's trying to condemn the killer without actually condemning the killer. She is literally trying to excuse the killer's actions as a byproduct of an allegedly patriarchal society rather than just calling him an evil lunatic. Which is, needless to say, diabolically disgraceful, but not in fact surprising. As the saying goes, if the left didn't have double standards, they wouldn't have any standards at all. Some of you might remember that in February this year, the San Francisco Unified School District recalled three board members for quite literally being too woke. Frustrated parents led the successful effort as a response to the fact the board was more focused on renaming 44 schools to be more social justice friendly rather than, you know, reopening schools in the wake of COVID. And to give you an idea of just how woke these three board members were, one of them, Alison Collins, posted in a series of tweets from 2016 that Asian Americans were house n-words and who used white supremacist thinking to get ahead and then she refused to resign over it when people raised their objections. She was the vice president of the board, by the way. However, it seems recalling these three board members wasn't actually enough, considering the board's latest venture into identity politics. Last Wednesday, the board announced that the word chief will no longer be used in job titles among its 10,000 employees, such as chief technology officer, chief of staff, etc. because, can you believe it, the word is apparently associated with Native Americans. As spokesperson Gentle Blythe stated in an email, while there are many opinions on the matter, our leadership team agreed that, given that Native American members of our community have expressed concerns over the use of the title, we are no longer going to use it. Okay, here's the thing. Despite the very obvious fact that this is wokeness on steroids, it also demonstrates a real ignorance, so to speak, among the disgruntled complainers who are obviously so privileged that the biggest thing they have to worry about is the use of the word chief in certain job titles, and also among the members of the board. See. The word chief doesn't really have that much to do with Native Americans historically. Now, it may have been applied to them by white settlers, but it's not actually their word, so to speak. In fact, the word had its roots in none other than Latin and Old French. Emerging circa the year 1300 and meaning highest in rank or power, most important or prominent, supreme, best, place above the rest, the word originates from the French word chief and also from 10th century modern French chef in addition to the Latin word caput, meaning head. Literally nothing to do with Native Americans. If anything, and look if we really want to go down that road, the Native Americans who are complaining about the use of the word should stop associating the word chief with their culture, lest they want to be guilty of, you know, cultural appropriation. But then again, I suppose if progressives weren't ignorant, well, they wouldn't be progressives, would they? And finally, for your viewing pleasure or not, here is my pick from that incomparable internet force, that interminable Twitter account, Libs of TikTok. I could have killed you, but I chose to let you live. I chose to let her live, as in I had a choice. All women should have a choice. Do you realize what you just said? Killed. I cannot wrap my brain around this, no matter how I look at it. If you don't want to use the word kill, that's fine. If you want to use the word kill, that's fine. When you use hand sanitizer, you kill germs. I could have simply chosen to let you not exist, but I let you exist. I let you form past the zygote phase. Is that better? So yes, I realize what I just said, and I stand by it. If you want to get in get in If you don't want to get in don't get in but don't try to oppress my rights. So aside from the fact that this is a, you know, diabolical thing to say, using the word live is actually a strange accidental admission from this wokey that a baby, when in utero, is in fact alive. 
By saying, I choose to let you live, she's categorically accepting that a fetus is a human life, and therefore terminating a pregnancy is electing to make the fetus not alive anymore. That is the opposite of the clump of cells argument that Wokies use when enthusing about terminating life in the womb. Quite the monumental slip up, really. Well, that's all we have time for in This Week in Woke. As some of my longer term subscribers may have realised, this is a, a bit of a reincarnation of my parodical news series this week in social justice. Please let me know if you like this new format, because if you do, I'll keep making it. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.